This Ridley-O is brought to you by LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them. I'm well, standing here with State Rep Caleb Dyer, who is, am I saying your last name correctly? Yes, you are saying my last it was, name. I guess the only uh, Libertarian Party uh, State Rep in New Hampshire, and one of the only ones in the country, maybe the only one? Uh, one of two legislators uh, in the country who are Libertarians, yep. Okay, so I would like to ask you a couple questions about uh, the concept of uh, independence, okay. uh, which you are on, on board with, I guess, uh, for New Hampshire. Uh, yeah, it would be it would be a long and interesting road, but you know, if, if we could if we could make progress towards it, yeah, it would be absolutely positive. I think the burning question on my mind is so uh, when, how, and why will you be submitting a uh, a change in the law that would make New Hampshire independent? Well, I'm probably going to be able to do it as a second year bill. Uh, it's kind of more of a politically oriented bill that, you know, is a very politically charged issue. There are obviously a lot of people who are, I would call them federalists in the House. Um, I would consider myself an anti-federalist. I know that we don't use those labels very commonly anymore. Well, that's their New England labels. I mean, this is, yeah. the, heart, this is the heart of anti-federalism from the, right. l the century before last. It, it's true. Um, but, you know, I plan on submitting a relatively anti-federalist um, resolution, I should say, uh, or constitutional amendment, um, you know, sometime in the second year, uh, so during the filing period at the end of this year. You were telling me that I guess, you know, initially you were planning to try and have one this year, but you decided to wait because it's so complicated, you wanted to get it right. Yeah, I had consulted actually two lawyers uh, concerning the matter, and um, the first one actually is over there in uh, the quote right now, uh, Carla. Carly Garrick. Um, she runs New Hampshire Independence.org, right? She used to. She used or to NH be. Independence. Yeah, right. I don't know if she's on the. Um, I know she's now with New Hampshire Independence. I don't know in what capacity. Oh, okay. I think she's either director or something like that. Um, but yeah, no, I, I spoke to her and she was very on board with trying to come up with language. Um, we still haven't drafted, you know, language that is 100 percent, you know, kosher with the Constitution. way to actually implement whatever we change it to. So whether or not that's somehow invoking Article 100, Section B of the Constitution, which is how a constitutional amendment is ratified by the people, um, whatever that is, we still need to kind of figure that out. So um, hopefully we have it figured out, figured out by the filing deadline. So I had been traditionally in favor of the idea of just taking a few words out of the New Hampshire Constitution, which bind uh, New Hampshire to the feds. But you're indicating that, there, that, that, that there's this whole body of statute that binds us to the feds that would have to be eliminated separately, is that correct? Yes. A lot of what exists at the federal level is not so much originally constitutional. It's not contained originally within the Constitution. It's presumed that the federal government can have a role if the states give it that role. So there's a lot of... Um, conditional kind of money from the federal government that whenever New Hampshire spends money, we can apply for grants and become eligible for um, some of that money as well at the federal level. So because it's voluntary in that respect that we have to spend money to get their money or we have to accept conditions to get their money, um, we have to choose to opt out of those things and become self-sufficient first. So while independence is in concept, in theory, excellent, we need to make strides towards real independence before we move to political independence. So we need real economic independence first to kind of preempt that. And I think once people realize that we do not need those federal monies or that we can operate without them at the very least, um, that we can make a go for it as a state. Well, of course, New Hampshire is a donor state, you know, so they're, yes. they're already sending a lot more to the feds than they're getting back. But like I said, it's not so cut and dry because even though we are a donor state, we still are reliant on our uh, federal, you know, subsidies or federal monies. We're still reliant on those monies to um, make our tax structure work very nicely. Otherwise, our tax structure kind of um, it doesn't. It wouldn't work as well as people would think. Um, you know, there would be a lot of crazy incentives that would exist. Like, for instance, lumber. Right? We have a 10% tax on timber. 10% timber tax. And that's relative. To Dump value. We have a 4% gravel tax. Our business tax structure is relatively consolidated, which is nice, but 
still it would be very difficult for certain businesses to continue if we were to eliminate certain federal monies that we get. So, What do you think is the number one hurdle between New Hampshire and independence? The number one hurdle really is that, is all of the statutory mess that is the um, promises of money. You know, it's, it's that carrot and stick kind of federal funding um, that really binds New Hampshire to the rest of the United States. And if we can solve that problem by kind of either reducing expenditures and not taking as much of the federal money, or if we can um, find out ways to replace the federal monies at the state level, then we can make a good you know, case for saying New Hampshire can do this on its own. We don't need the federal government. All right. Anything else you'd like to add that I haven't thought of? No, but um, thanks, Dave, for giving me the opportunity. It's always a pleasure to talk with you, man. Oh, thanks. Um, well, I don't even, I'm not even sure we've ever met before. So. Well, I mean, I have messaged you, I know, on yeah. Facebook and all that. But anyhow. So, all right. Yeah. Great. Well, we'll, we'll see. Uh, We'll see what can happen. You know, independence can can come about quickly, but usually the what was it like Sun Tzu said you, you can you can pr- protect yourself against defeat, but only the enemy provides the opportunity for victory. Indeed, yes, we will need to capitalize on every opportunity we have to you know increase New Hampshire's already independent spirit through political means. So there are plenty of ways to do that other than just a constitutional amendment, you know. But um, we plan to do that too. So. All right, we'll see what happens. All right. Thanks, Caleb. I don't like Freedom Radio Talk. Listening to LRN-FM makes me balk. Far from it, I should probably walk. LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them.